Hi everyone. Welcome to the first lecture on machine learning from eGate.ai. Machine learning is gaining prevalence and widespread adoption across several significant domains spanning web search, e-commerce, healthcare, finance, space exploration and beyond. But what exactly is machine learning? There are many ways to conceptualize the essence of machine learning. So let us examine a variety of these interpretation, probably starting with a relatable analogy and progressing towards a more formal definition. Let us start with an analogy to writing programs. Arthur Samuel, widely credited with popularizing the term machine learning during the latter part of the 20th century, interprets this field as following. Machine learning is the field of study that gives the computer the ability to learn without being explicitly programmed. Now let's dive deeper into Dr. Samuel's explanation to get a better understanding. You might be familiar with a traditional programming setup where a computer follows a program often written by human and taking input data to generate corresponding outputs. In machine learning, it's a bit different. Here, the computer uses the input data and the corresponding outputs to create a program. This program can then be used to generate outputs for new inputs, even if we don't know what those outputs should be in advance. Pretty cool, right? So this phenomena is what we call as the ability to generalize generalized to unseen instances. If we look at the taxonomy of machine learning, say relevant to gate, we may consider the following. An ML system may either be supervised or unsupervised. In supervised systems, we need training or in other words, we need training data to be labeled where the inputs are paired with the correct outputs. It may further be categorized into classification and regression. Supervised machine learning involves learning a target function that best maps the input variables to an output variable. Here, we are talking about a mathematical function where there exists a relationship between inputs and their corresponding outputs such that each input corresponds to exactly one output. This is a general learning task where we would like to make predictions in the future given new examples of input variables. We don't know what the function looked like or its form. If we did, we would use it directly and we would not need to learn it from data using machine learning algorithms. Does this imply that we are limited to learning only things that can be expressed as functions? Well, to begin with, we generally start with the assumption that a given task can indeed be a learned function. This could involve something as complex as estimating the effectiveness of medical treatment or even as straightforward as distinguishing between cats and dogs from images. Our aim is typically to discover the closest possible approximation, which can be represented as a function to the true underlying phenomenon. Similarly, unsupervised learning forms another paradigm. Here, we essentially learn a structure or discover a pattern without the need for human intervention. In other words, 
unsupervised learning does not require labeled information whereas supervised learning do unsupervised learning can be further categorized into clustering and dimensionality reduction when we train a machine learning model we don't just want it to learn to model the training data instead we want it to generalize to data it hasn't seen before finally let's look at a more formal definition of machine learning as defined by professor tom mitchell a computer program is said to learn from experience e with respect to some class of tasks t and performance measure p if its performance at tasks in t as measured by p improves with experience e here there are three essential components so in case you are confused with the definition let's dissect it and let's look into it in more detail so here we are talking about three components we first talked about a task t a task is nothing but something that provides a clear definition of what needs to be done or what needs to be achieved so if your challenge or if your problem is to identify cats and dogs from a set of images then that's your task definition you may change this definition to say that i need to identify cats i need to identify dogs but my images may contain those images which are not belonging to either a cat or a dog that means now the task definition is changing to identifying three different categories one involving cat dog as well as the other class now if we need to have a task and if we define it well then we need to measure the extent to which the success is achieved for a given task in the case of cats and dogs classification of cats and dogs we basically need to know how often the system behaves correctly so we need to come up with a measure that measures it it can be something like precision it can be something like accuracy which we will look into later but we need to have a quantifiable measure then comes the final part where the system needs to have some experience in this case the experience is manifested in the form of data so in other words if we have a well defined task and if we have the data to inform the system on how to learn it for the task then using a performance measure if we can measure whether the system is improving on its task the whole framework can be seen as a machine learning framework in the coming lecture we will consider how we can take a real world problem say that of estimating the performance of movies then we will see how different ml paradigms can be used to address the problem by formulating it into different tasks thanks everyone bye